Okay, you've imported your reference schematic, so let's get started with the actual schematic here. Let's play some resistors. Hit P on your keyboard to go to place part. Then if you don't have libraries loaded here, choose add library. Then you select the libraries. Now, if you don't see this folder, you just navigate to here where it says capture library piece by under these folder hierarchy. Then you would select from the analog Dot olp library that's really kind of all you need honestly then there's also the source library which is important so you would add analog.olb and then look for source.olb as well you click open both of those libraries get added and you're ready to start working so first of all let's start with this little component here rc now how did i zoom in i hit i on my keyboard you can zoom in i for in and O for out on your keyboard, so that's really convenient. RC, let's place a resistor. So just type R and that'll show up. Oh, it didn't. Well, why is that? Because we don't have the analog library selected. We have the source library selected. So what you do is choose the analog library and then R will show up. To make this really easy, just hit Control A to select all the libraries and R will show up. Be careful and make sure you always get your part from the actual library you want it from, not just the design cache. Okay, double click on R, then it gets attached to your cursor. Now you can place the resistor, but before you do that, just right click and then choose edit properties. This allows you to choose the resistor value that you want, 4.7K, then hit tab, go to the next field, we'll go with RC. And there you go, click OK. And let's go to where we actually want to put it. RC is somewhere like around here for our compensation. And then what's the next resistor in our reference design? RF2. So right click, edit properties, choose 20 kilo ohms and RF2. Enter. And we'll place that in line with the FB or feedback pin in this chip. Now, if you already know how to do all this, just skip ahead and build a reference schematic. Okay, but if you're new to this, then just follow along. I'll show you everything you need to know. All right, what's the next resistor we need? RFA. So right click on your work area, edit properties. RFA is a 40 kilo ohm resistor, RFA. Now you can put them in all caps if you want, like RF underscore FA if that works better for you, but I'm fine with R lowercase FA. And you put that on the FA slash SD pin. So let's go here. Place that. Um, there we go. What do we have here now? There, we have any other resistors? Yes, there's one more called RSN. So right click, edit properties. And this is a 0 0.025 ohm resistor, real small. Yeah, RSN, click OK. And this is placed somewhere under some MOSFET. Uh, but in line sort of like below P, G, and D, or power ground. So I'm going to place this over here. And I forgot how to mention uh, rotating your parts. So you right click and then choose rotate or hit R on your keyboard to rotate. Sorry about that. Mm, place this right around here. Okay, it's placed. Right click and choose end mode or escape on your keyboard. I'll be using a lot of shortcuts, so yeah. Okay, the next parts we want to place is the C or capacitors. I'm not going to use C from the design cache. I'll go with C analog. And double click there to start adding some C's. C it gets attached to my cursor. And then CC 22 nanofarad. So right click, edit properties. Hmm. Okay, part value is 22 nanofarad. Use a capital F, small n. C, 
small c there, there we go. And we'll put that in line with the compensation pin. Yeah, that makes sense. C, lowercase c, c for compensation. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And I'll put this right here. There we go. Wait, wait. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Let's see what else we've got now. What? Wait, what's going on? This is a phantom. It's a phantom bar? What? Okay. Anyway, uh, let's see. What else do we have in the schematic? CSN. So go here and double click on your CSN there. Right click, edit properties. And CSN is a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. Now, it's popular to do this, and that's fine, but I like to go with numbers that don't have any decimal places, just in case there are any printing errors, like printing this on a big sheet of paper, or uh, visual sight errors. People can miss decimal points very easily sometimes. So this is the same as 10 nanofarads. And instead of C question mark, we'll go with CSN. Click OK and place it next to RSN on the left side of RSN. Where is RSN? I see the RF2 there. It's bugging me hanging off the end there. But anyway, OK and place it right to the left of RSN. Great. What else do we have? Hmm. What else do we have? We placed our resistors. There's an inductor here, and there are two more capacitors. Let's continue with our capacitors since we're in C analog anyway. And C in, we would change that. Right click it, edit properties, and change it to 100 microfarad, just like it says for the part value. And then C in would be the part reference. Place this in the upper right ish of your circuit. Oh, wait a second, did I place the, okay, hope not. I hope I didn't place the capacitor. Let's see. Okay, cool. Now the next capacitor is C out, and I'm just gonna right click, edit properties. I, I know this already since I built the circuit already, and it's a 100 microfarad capacitor. There are two C out capacitors. How do I know that? Click okay. The reason I know that is because in the reference design, it shows one capacitor, but it says C out times two. What it means is we need two 100 microfarad capacitors. Then they just took out a capacitor because that makes the design look cleaner, or maybe it takes less time, you know. So R on your keyboard to rotate that, and then place one capacitor here, then your second see out right here great end mode now we do have an inductor in this circuit and that is l so highlight that and choose l l from the analog library again very popular library i'm going to rotate this three times to get my dot on the top and this is a 10 micro henry inductor i'll just place this Right around here somewhere. Let me see. Place this around, I don't know, over here or something like that. And then we have two more devices to add. So how do we get those, right? If we are lucky, they just happen to be just, you know, in the folders that we have. Ah, actually the IRF7807 is inside the IRF library, so that's really good. Inter IRF stands for International Rectifier. Double click on that, and we'll place that above the RSN resistor. So we'll place this right around here. And then the last part will be the diode the MBRD340 shock key, and you add it to your schematic.